Good afternoon, grade 12s. You are speaking to Ramukheti, the deputy principal of Horatuto in Botabelo. I'm the teacher for mathematical literacy. And today I'm presenting to you mathematical literacy paper two, which has three topics. Before I go to the topics, let's discuss how many marks does the paper covers. The paper covers 150 marks and it is written for three hours. The Moteo district under Free State, it says we are raising the bar, closing the gap and leaving no grade 12 behind. Our question paper may have four questions or five questions. It is divided into three topics like I indicated. The first topic is map, plans and other representation of the physical world. The weighting of the paper is 40%. The other topic is measurement. The weighting is 55%. And the last topic is probability, which is 5%. Under maps and plans and other presentation of the physical world, as a candidate, you are expected to work with number scales and bar scales, where you calculate the actual distance if the map distance is given. You also calculate the map distance if the actual distance are given. You determine the most appropriate scale in which to draw a map. Determine the scale of the map in the form of 1 is 2. The other subtopic is working with the layout plans, which include the seating plan or the layout of a classroom, the layout of the building or the sports field, the layout of the store at the shopping center, the seating plan for the cinema and sports stadium. And the other subtopic is work in the following maps. We have different maps in the world, which include the street map with or without the grid references, the national map, the provincial road, and the railway maps. We also have the strip chart, the elevation maps, residential or housing estate. And the other subtopic is use assembly versus or instruction diagram for unassembled wooden furniture units, electrical appliance that require individual components to be connected, as well as the Lego type kits. The other subtopic under map and plans is models where we investigate packaging arrangement of various regular shaped objects for the 2D and the 3D packaging space. You determine the most appropriate ways of packaging for optimal use of space and determine the most cost effective way of packaging. And then we have the second topic, which is measurement. Under measurement, we have conversion where we convert from memory within the metric system, millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers, milliliters to liters, the, the kilograms to the tons. If I cite an example from the grams, we move to the kilograms, from kilograms we go to the ton. And then the other, Subtopic is we convert from metric to imperial and imperial to metric. We also convert from solid to liquid where we deal with the grams or the kilograms and we have milliliters to liters. We have the other conversion factor where we, we double, we multiply the unit by itself where we have centimeter to the power two and meter to the power two converted to the liters. And we also have millimeter to the power three and centimeter to the power three and millimeter and liters. 
And the other subtopics under conversion we have temperature, where we convert from degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit using the given formula or converting from Fahrenheit to degree Celsius. The other subtopics that we are having is the times. Like we are having times that we are using every day in the form of watches. We have the digital and the analog. So under times is the interpretation of various times formulae. Convert from seconds, minutes, hours, and days. We calculate elapsed time. We interpret time recording formats and interpret transport timetables. The other subtopic is measuring length, weight, volume, and temperature. On the question paper, you are expected to calculate the cost of travel a certain distance. Calculate the time taken to complete a journey. Calculate the speed. Calculate the body mass index and determine weight statuses. Use body mass index values and road to health road chart. Under the road to health road chart, we are talking about the cart where the little one gets it immediately after he or she is born. That chart is the one that the mom is taking the child to, to clinic with, to check how the child is growing, whether the child is normal or is not growing normally. Determine medicine doses using formulae or growth chart. Under the medicine doses, we are having different people in this world. Where we are having the children, we are also having the adults. So with medicine dosages, the children are not supposed to drink the same medication like the adults. And then we also calculate values using a formula involving the volume, how much have you consumed. We also have the other subtopic, calculating perimeter, area, and volume. The most important thing, candidate, that you have to look at, you need to check the perimeter. When you calculate the perimeter, the unit is to the power one. When you calculate the area, the unit is to the power two. And when you calculate the volume, the unit is to the power three. So under those calculations, you calculate or you measure the perimeter and the area of the different figures. You will be provided with the plot in the examination where you were supposed to, to calculate the perimeter of that plot. So the most important thing, candidates, that you have to look at, you need to check the structure. What kind of structure is provided? Because we are having circles, we are having the squares, we are having the rectangles, and sometimes the circle can be a semicircle. So the most important thing when you check the question paper, candidates, you need to look at the, the different figure provided in front of you. And then remember, you will be provided with the formula every time where you have to substitute. So the most important thing, you have to check all the dimensions that are provided there. And under calculations, you are calculating or you are measuring surface area of a rectangular boxes and cylinders. With rectangular boxes, to cite an example to, or to make the real example in reality, you look at the rectangular box that can be able to store the, the equipment at home, like your dad at home is having the, 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 the spanner that is using at home and other, ish, other substances that they are being used at home, they can be stored in that rectangular boxes. And to cite an example of a cylinder, a cylinder can be a can of coke that can also be used. And the other calculations is calculating or measuring the volume of a rectangular boxes as well as a cylinder. And then we come to the probability. Probability can feature in between the maps and plans or under, under measurement, or sometimes it can stand on its own based on the questions that are being asked by the, by the, by the, 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 the person who set the paper. So under probability, what do you have to be careful of? 
you need to recognize the difference between events, the outcomes, as well as the results. You need to know the probability scale. You must express probabilities using fractions, percentage, and decimal. And you must also understand the difference between relative frequency and theoretical probability. You must understand the predictions about the future that are based on events in the past. And also candidates, remember, you must recognize the difference between the situation where the outcome of one event impacts on the outcome of another. In situation where the outcomes have no impact on each other. And also identification of possible outcomes for compound events by using three diagrams as well as two-way contingency table. Candidates, the other thing that you have to remember, you need to evaluate and critique the validity of expression of probability presented in the media and other resources. To make an example with probability, we have the probability line. Our probability line starts from zero and it ends at one. We cannot have the probability that is more than one. Because when we talk of probability, we are talking of the chances of an event to take place. So on the probability line, we say from zero, the chances are impossible. It is not going to take place. We also look at zero. Under the percentage, we say is 0% because the event is not going to happen. To cite an example, in an event where we are saying a male person can be pregnant, the chances there are not there. It is not possible for a male person to be pregnant. And then we look at the last event where we are having one. One is 100%. Under 100%, we are sure that this is going to take place. We are certain that this is taking place. Like, for example, Mera Mukhet is at a studio presenting mathematical literacy. What are the chances? The chances are 100%. We are sure because currently I am presenting. In the middle of our probability line, we have a fraction. Because remember, probability candidates has to be represented in three ways. As a fraction, as a decimal, as well as a percentage. So the most important thing that you need to check in the examination, you need to look at the question. What is the question? How is the question phrased? So if the question just asks about probability and they didn't lead you to say answer in decimal or in percentage or simplify your answer, then you are expected to write all the three possible answers. So you are expected to start as a fraction and then you write that percentage, the decimal, and lastly the percentage. So in the middle, we are saying it's 1 over 2 because half of 1 is 2. So half as a decimal is 0, 0,5. When we multiply 0, 0,5 by 100, we get 50%. So the chances here in the middle, we say the chances are 50, 50. And then between 0 and half, we have 1 over 4 because the fraction between 0 and half is a quarter. And this quarter, when we write it as a decimal, it becomes 0, 0,25. When we write it as a percentage, we multiply 0, 0,25 by 100 and then we get 25%. So in here, between zero and half, we say the chances are unlikely. And then we move to the next level, which is half, between half and one. Between half and one, we have three over four, which is three quarters of what we are heavy. So with three quarters, we say as a decimal is zero, 0.75 and 0, 0.75 we multiply it by 100 we get 75%. In here the chances will be likely. And by now 
hopefully you understand now according to our probability line it starts from zero and then we go up to one because we can't have the probability that is above one and then under probability we are having possible outcomes under the the three diagrams so with the three diagrams We look at the possibility of Mera Mugheti having a child. If it, it happens that Mera Mugheti is pregnant now as we speak. So if I am pregnant and we avoid all other life science issues, what are the chances that I will have a boy or a girl? So when we look at a tree diagram, we are representing it in, in this format. So we are having Ramocheti, who is the lady who is pregnant now. So the chances for Ramocheti to have a child will be the firstborn can either be a boy or a girl. And the boy will be represented by letter B and a girl represented by letter G. So there are two outcomes in the first attempt if Ramocheti plan to have one child. Let's extend it. Mera Mugheti now planned to have two children. So now the firstborn was a boy. And then now we move on again. After the boy, there will be a boy or a girl. And then when the girl was born, I will be having a boy or a girl. Now the possible outcomes there are no longer two, but they are four. And then when we look at the how will the outcomes be, then we will have boy and a boy, followed by a boy and a girl, followed by a girl and a boy, and lastly, a girl and a girl. And there may be a question candidate that will be saying, what are the chances that Mera Mugheti will have the two children that have the same gender? So remember, the question didn't talk about any either boy or girl, it says the same gender. The same gender means Mera Mugheti is having two children with who are the two boys, either the, the two girls. So we check because we said on two attempts where Mera Mugheti plans to have four children, then the outcomes are four. So if I plan to have the children of the same danger, gender, the probability of the children with the same gender will be two because we are having two boys and two girls. And in the case where the question says simplify because I'm having two over four outcomes, I simplify. When I simplify, I look for the number that can go into two and four and that number is two. So I divide two by two, then I get one. I divide four by two, then I get two. So in the case, the question says, determine the probability of Mera Mugheti getting the same gender and simplify your answer. We expect you to have the numerator and the denominator being simplified because in the first instances, it was two over four. Then when we simplify, our two is the numerator and four is the denominator. It takes us to one over two, which is half. Now remember, there, the, on the question paper, if you are allocated two marks, the one mark will go for the, for your answer and the other mark will go for, for the answer that is simplified. And then the other example that I can make is tossing a coin. When you toss a coin, the outcomes that you get for the first attempt, you either get a tail or a head. And then if you toss it for the second time again, it is only one coin. That one that was tossed on the tail, you toss it again. It can land on the tail or the head. We go again to the one that landed on the head. When you toss it, you also get a tail and the head. I use T for tail and H for head. And then we extend it again for the third time. Under the tail there, you will get, you toss, you get a tail and a head. 
On the head you toss, you get a tail and a head. On a tail you toss, you get a tail and a head. And the last one is a head you toss again, you get a tail and a head. And now the question will be, how many outcomes do we have now because we toss one coin three times? So the possible outcomes for the first time will be triple tail, followed by tail, tail, and head, followed by tail, head, and tail, and followed by tail, head, and head. And the other one will be head, tail, and tail, followed by head, tail, and head, and the other attempt is head, head, and tail, and lastly, it will be triple head. And then you have to count now how many outcomes, because the question said, how many outcomes are there if you toss a coin three times? So the possible outcomes you count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the outcomes there will be eight outcomes. That is about probability on a tree diagram. Then we move on to a, the other one, which is a two-way table. As we speak now, most of the candidates, they are camping where they are so that as teachers who are teaching mathematical literacy, we can be able to access them freely to avoid absenteeism in class attendance. So at the camp, there is a menu that is provided at a camp there. So learners are camping there. So the example that I will make now, I will make an example of three days where the menu is provided and we look at the starch and the protein. So I am going to make use of symbols. So for Sam, I use S and the as a form of starch and porridge, I use P and the one is, the other one is rice. And then for the protein part, we use means letter M, we use C, which is for chicken, and then we use B, which is for beef. There are veggies, but on the two-way table, we only show the, the starch and the protein, like I indicated with the symbols. So for the first day, when you arrive at a camp, according to this menu, you will eat semp with mince. For the other one, you will eat semp with chicken. For the other one, you will eat semp with, with beef. And we move on to the next type of protein as well as a starch. So we have porridge. You will get porridge with mince. You get porridge with chicken. You get porridge with beef. And the other column, which is for the other starch in the form of rice. So you will get rice with mince. And then you have rice, I mean to say rice with chicken, and then you have rice with, with, with beef. We are doing this two-way table because we don't want learners to repeat the menu over and over. So let's say, for example, the learners are keeping at my school at Horatuto. So for the first day, they will eat semp with, with mince, if this is the, the meal for the, for the evening. And then the second day, they will eat porridge with mince. The other day, they will eat rice with mince. Because there's a variety there. We didn't mix one thing at a time. Or it will be semp. After SEMP, it will be followed by rice, depending on how the menu is organized by the, by the kitchen cookers. So when we look at a number of outcomes here, when we look at provision for three proteins and provision for three starch, we will see that in here we have nine outcomes. So meaning that the learners will be able to eat these three types of meals without repeating the other one. Because in the exam, the question will be, what will be the probability of eating beef at a camp? You go on the contingency table and you check 
the beef. How many times do you get beef? It appears three times. Out of how many times? Out of nine outcomes. And now the question says you must simplify your answer. So you look for the number that go into three and the number that go into nine. That three, the, the, the number that can go also into nine. So you divide three, which is that number. Three divided by three is one, and nine divided by three is three. Because the question says your answer must be in fractional form, and it has to be simply fight. Then we move to the beginning where we started. We talked about maps, plans, and other representation in the physical world. And we said we are dealing with the number scales and the bar scales. So with the number scales, if I make an example, we have the number scale in the form of 1 is to 50,000. And now in the examination, candidates remember, there might be a question that says, explain what does the scale mean? So when you respond, we expect your answer to be in the form of, one unit on the map is represented by 50,000 units in reality. Remember I said one unit and then also on the 50,000, I also use the unit. To avoid confusion, don't use the measurement, the, the, the symbols that we use for measurement because sometimes you will be confused by making one centimeter and then you say 50,000 kilometers because it is the map of the of the of, of, of South Africa where we are dealing with big numbers so when you are expected to explain just say one unit is represented by 50,000 unit in reality and we also have a bar scale to cite an example with a bar scale the bar scale will be in the form of a bar representing representing information differently. So they will say one block is representing, for example, 100 kilometers. If I have the other one, I will have 200 kilometers. So with the bar scale, you are expected to measure either using your ruler or you can use a, a thread where you are dealing with the map of the of South Africa, where you need to measure the distances that is not straight, that cannot be measured with the ruler. So you measure and then you take your thread to the ruler and you go to the bar scale so that you can be able to check what is what is given and how the question want us to do. And then sometimes the scales that we are given, you will be given information where you are supposed to write it in unit ratio. Let's say, for example, you, you, you measure and the information that you, you have when you, you do your, your responses, you find that you are given information in the form of 20 is 200 and then you are expected to write it in unit form. In unit form you have to divide 20 by 20 and 100 by 20 where 20 into 20 goes once and then 20 into, into 100 it goes five times. So the ratio there will be 1 is to 5. So there are other attempts where you are given information where you must write in unit form and round according to the given context. So rounding is very, very important. So whenever you read your question paper, candidates, be careful. Round as instructed. When they say round to, the, to three decimal places, do so. Because on the instruction to candidate in front of the question paper, you, it is written round according to the given context, unless it is stated otherwise. And we come to the, to the layout plans. So the most common question that is asked there is the floor plan. So with the floor plan, we are talking about the top view of the structure. 
that you are looking at, the top view of the house that you are looking at, which that's when we talk of the, of the floor plan. And then we also have the layout of the buildings and the sports field and the layout of the stores of the shopping centers. So with the buildings or the, 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 the sports field, if I cite an example, you will be given the field of soccer where the dimensions are given. So on a soccer field, you are expected to have the center and you also have the goal point. And then you are given the dimensions there where you must be able to use that sports field so that you can be able to calculate either the perimeter, you calculate the area, or you, you calculate according to the, to the instructions. And then we look at the layout of the shopping centers when we come to maps and plans. On the shopping center in Bloemfontein, we are having the shopping center by the name of Mimosa Mall. In Mimosa Mall, we have different shops. And it is not only the shops. We are also having the bathrooms on the mall. We are also having the banks because a shopping center is a place where people who went for shopping can access things that they need so that their life can be able to move on. So with the layout of the shopping centers, there are also emergency points. That shows in the case of an emergency, there is an assembling point that you need to look at. So whenever you look at that map, you must be able to read and see all the features that are featured in the, in the shopping center. And then we have the sitting plan for the cinemas. At the shopping center, we are having the cinema. A cinema is a place where people are watching the movie. So in the movie, at a cinema, there's a sitting plan. In some places, when you buy a ticket, you are getting also a seat number where you are supposed to sit. Or at a stadium, then there's a match between chiefs and pirates. And then you go to compute ticket, you buy the ticket there. So at a sports stadium, you are expected to seat according to the to the number that you get at the at the at the at the, at the, at the at the shop where you bought the ticket and then according to the to the spots or the cinema sitting plan there's a layout there's also a space provided for people with with wheelchairs so you need to be careful because there might be a question indicating the sitting plan in a cinema where the people with disability are also supposed to be accepted because we are living in a democratic country everybody has the right so we need to accommodate those people at a cinema so whenever you are given the layout you need to check the place for the people with disability, how many places are allocated for disability people. And then you must also check the layout at the front line, the same as the middle line, as well as the back line. And how many seats can be accommodated in that cinema. And remember, you will be able to ask the question based on movement. You are moving from the front. You want to go to the bathroom, so you are given direction. When you move from the front, you want to go outside. Let's say, for example, you are at the stadium, and then you want to go to the bathrooms. So you need to move in such a way that you check the direction provided to you. And then with that direction, you must be able to reach the destination. So... Candidates, be careful. That type of question is the question where most candidates don't understand exactly. So know the direction. Know when to turn left. Know when to pass certain number of seats before you get to that seat. And another example that you can make, you went to the sports stadium to watch parents playing with Kaiser Chiefs. And then at the stadium, you didn't sit on the same seat next to your friend. And then your friend called you and said, I am seated at A. And you check yourself that you are seated at G. And your friend told you the seat number. And you must move where you are. 
to your friend. So you must be able to know how to read. Check the layout. Is it labeled according to the alphabet? Is it labeled according to the number? Is it labeled according to the colors? It depends on how the question will be, will be asked. And then we, you are also expected to answer question on the different types of maps. We have the street map. In Bloemfontein, if I cite the example, we are in the site of Mimosa Mall, then we will be having the, the different streets that we make use of, where you can be able to locate where the person is staying at. And then there are maps with grid and there are maps without grid references. Maps with grid references are the one that will be labeled. Let me make an example. We have letter A, B, C, D, and E. And then we divide it into, into blocks. So this block, we put it on top of the map of Bloemfontein. So let's say, for example, we look at the, the other columns. So our block is divided into, into five columns. So in, in block number one, we have a place like Park Road. So when we look at Park Road, Park Road is the police station that we get next to, next to the Mimosa Mall. So this Park Road police station, when we look according to the grid reference that I have just written now, you will see that we say it is at C3 or we say it's at 3, 3C because you are, must be able to determine exactly where the back road is. That's when we talk about the, the grid references. And then we have the national, the provincial road and the railway, the rail maps. On the map, you will see that we have a train that has to pass between Bloemfontein. So probably most of our trains, they pass between the Church Street as well as the, as the Batu, Batu location. So that rail maps, it is very, very important. So there will be road signs that indicate that there is a train that passing here. So as passengers, we need to be very careful. There will be a sign that indicates stop that we must stop there. And then we talk of the provincial roads. In here in Bloemfontein, the provincial roads that we are talking of, they are represented by letter, by letter R. They are provincial because they are the R26, they are the R36. Based on the map, you check the location, the towns that are indicated there. When you travel from one place to the other, like for example, if I'm in Bloemfontein, I'm traveling from Bloemfontein, I'm going to Cape Town, I'm going to use the national road, which is the N1. And N1 is the national road that you get when you travel from Bloemfontein, you go to, to Cape Town. You can also use N1 when you travel from Bloemfontein, you go to Johannesburg. But with the R, I'm traveling from Botabelo, I'm traveling, I'm going to, to a spread. So the road that I'm going to use there, once I pass Tabanch, we are no longer at N8 but we are at R26, according to the, the road signs. That's what you need to, to check because there might be a question candidates that will be saying you must identify how many provincial roads are indicated or which national road do you use to travel from one place to, to the other. And then we have the strip chart. The strip chart is where you are traveling from Bloemfontein to Cape Town. Let's say when you travel from Bloemfontein to Cape Town, you travel 779 kilometers. So you must be able to indicate on the strip chart where is the beginning of the journey and where does your journey end. So with that strip chart, there are so many calculations that can be calculated there. Because remember when we travel, we make use of public transport or we make use of 
our own transport, our own cars, private transport. So with the private transport, you need to know how many kilometers you have to travel and how long does it take for the journey. And then you must also be able to know the time that you're going to take because there might be a question where you must calculate speed. So speed is equal to distance over time. So when you calculate the speed, you must be given the distance that you are traveling and the time that you take. The most important thing, candidate, that you need to remember with time, you need to see that with time, you will be given the time that you, you depart and the time that you arrive in Cape Town. So be careful because along the way, there are station points where you take a break or where you refuel the car. So remember, when we calculate the speed, we don't include any stops on the time. So you must be able to identify how many times on this trip did the, the, the traveler stops. And then you must be able to subtract it from there from the total time took on the journey and then you you use it as the time where you calculate your speed and that time sometimes it is provided when you calculate in hours and minutes so the most important thing that you have to do because we said under measurement we convert you must convert that time to the hours only meaning if it is one hour and 30 minutes you must be able to divide the 30 minutes with 60 and it is going to give you comma five. And then you add one to comma five. You have one plus zero comma five, which will give you one comma five hours. And this one comma five hours is the one that you can substitute on the time. And then your answer will be in kilometers per, per hour. And then we move on to the next one, which are the elevation maps, as well as the residential or the housing estate. Under the residential or housing estate is where we are provided with the maps of the flats, where the flat is provided, where there's a side view of the flat, when you must be able to identify how many tenants can be accommodated in that in that place in that place and then we have assemblies instructions in the diagrams assembling and instructions candidate is where most of the learners find this difficult because they struggle to assemble and they forget that when they are little ones they were bought the lego lego kit as a form of token of appreciation where our children at home did their, did their best and they have passed. They have been moved from one grade to another. And then to show as a token of appreciation that they did their best when they are still young in primary schools, we buy them the Lego type kids. These Lego type kids, they need to be assembled. They need to be assembled in such a way that you have a concrete structure that you can say, I assemble it to make a car if the child is a boy. I assemble it to make one of the structures that I can get at house. So be careful candidates. You know how to assemble. It's just that you don't understand the phrasing of the question. So read the question, understand the question as to when we talk of unassembled structures, what are we talking about? To cite an example, Mega Mocheti plans to buy a furniture, and then I went to Lewis store. At Lewis stores, I must be able to, 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 to buy the furniture, identify and give specification what kind of, of furniture do I need. I want to buy a music system. With the music system, I'm going to get different components packed in different boxes. And then inside that, that box, I will be getting the manual which is the instruction on how to, to assemble this music system. So there are different steps provided. So in the exam candidates, you will be provided with that question where you must be able to assemble the structure in order so that we know which part has to be fitted with the other one. At the end, when we test, the system can be able to operate and we listen to the news or we listen to the, to the music. So be careful, guys. Whenever we talk of assembling, like in electrical appliances, when to cite an example of a, of a plug that we use in grade 10, 
it is also good to know how to how to assemble the the the, the, the wires of a plug because a plug has only three items that you have to feed. So after feeding those items in that plug, you plug it and you plug it on. If it doesn't work, it shows that the wires are not in, in order, especially under the electric appliances and models. With the models, there are certain questions that are asked on the, on the buckies that are used. To cite an example, the buggy used by office shops that are transporting paper to different schools so that buggy need to know how many boxes can be filled in that buggy so with the box we need to know the length of the box we need to know the height of the box we need to know the the, the breadth of the box so that we can be able to calculate the volume of that box because the volume of the box will be length times breadth times height so that we can find how many papers or how many packets of photocopying paper can be packed in that box and also those box must be fitted in a bucky we need to know the dimensions of a bucky how long is the bucky how many boxes can be fitted in that's when we talking of packaging and arrangement an example in the kitchen because remember in mathematical literacy we are talking of maths in the kitchen so in the kitchen we are baking so whenever we bake at home we have a pan where we put the cakes inside the pan we cannot pack other cakes on top of each other remember because under measurement we are having a recipe the recipe let's say is a recipe of biscuit it indicates that this recipe can be able to make this number of biscuits according to the circumference if we are we are making it in circular form so in a pen you need to know the dimensions of a pen as well as the as the diameter of each circle of a biscuit so that you can be able to know how many biscuits can be packed in a pen and we you put them in the oven by cooking which is the time that we talked about and then on that recipe you will be able to know how much how many minutes were taken in preparation how many minutes were taken to place the biscuit in the oven and what time do they have to come out with degrees celsius and fahrenheit you will see that with the degree celsius at home we are using 180 but with the fahrenheit because it is international degree symbol is the national degree symbol you will see it is in Paris. so the formula will be provided that in the case where you are baking this biscuit must be out by this time and how much heat do you need based on the fahrenheit as well as the the degree celsius under packaging and then we must also determine the most cost effective way of packaging how many items can be packed to make sure that at the end of the day all the items fitted in and then you know what how how the 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 the, 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 the you need to look at the bucky that you are going to use to pack and the space that is needed so that at the end of the day everything is in in order and then we have the times that we interpret we have the digital and the analog and the time we have am and pm with am we are talking of anti meridian with pm we are talking of post meridian so with the time we need to know exactly is it in the morning is it in the afternoon because we know a day takes 24 hours so the most important thing you need to know how to interpret them because the question might come in the exam and say, when did the family arrive when they traveled from Bloemfontein to Cape Town? How long did they take? So you need to tell, they took this much and at what time did they arrive there? Was it in the morning or was it in the afternoon? So be careful and be specific. And the other thing that you need to look at on the time, you will be provided, for example, number of days. Those number of days, you must be able to convert them to the hours. 
you must also be able to convert them to the minutes as well as to the second or vice versa where you are given a calendar where they say this advertisement run from this day up to another one so you must be able to identify how many days does the promotion last so that you know that it expires by this day and then we also have the other one which is interpretation of transport timetables with transport timetables we have different types of transport we have the trains we have the buses we have the taxis a taxi can travel at any time but it depends because it's a public transport it depends on the destination where the taxi is if the town is a small area there's a time that the taxi will be depart to the destination of the of the passenger's choice and then there will be a time again when the taxi will come back so be careful when we talk of the distance of the of the return because we have single and return with the return you double the the amount of kilometers if you are asked how many kilometers for the return trip when you travel from Bluefontaine to Cape Town like I made an example of 779 kilometers so if they say for the return you multiply it by by 2 so with the transport timetables when we look at the the the, the means of transport that many people are using when they travel from Bluefontaine to Botswana we are using a bus So whenever we travel using a bus, a bus cannot just move on its own time. There are bus schedules that are provided that this bus is departing by this time and it will arrive there. That is the estimated time. So we need to be to be careful on the schedule under the timetable that is provided. So whenever you answer a question, you must be able to know what is expected from you. In conclusion, every time Whenever you answer your question, read your question, underline the most important thing that you need to 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 underline so that at the end of the day you know exactly what has to be substituted. To cite an example, you will be given the length, the breadth and the height and you are expected to substitute, but the length, the breadth and the height are not on the same unit. So you need to check what does the question need candidate Be careful of that don't just substitute and use your calculator and get the answers because the answers that you got might be wrong because the unit are not the same because we are supposed to convert according to the to the question if the question says convert to centimeter and the length is in in millimeter then the breadth and the height are in centimeters the most important thing you need to change your length to to the centimeters and then after you must be able to to calculate and get your answer and then you substitute it because remember when you are given the formula and you have to convert there's a mark for conversion after that there's a mark for substitution on the formula and there's a mark for the for the answer and at the end there's a mark for the unit but remember don't write the unit if you are not sure of everything of the best candidate for tomorrow's paper remember we are not leaving any grade 12 behind in free state i thank you